Lucas Sims is trying to come back after missing most of last year with a back issue. Let's talk Lucas's return and backs. Dr. Ben Valley, Ortho Cincy, next. No one covers the Bengals like ESPN 1530, Cincinnati's sports station. Sports updates in service of Kelsey Chevrolet, home of Lifetime Powertrain Protection. Uh, guaranteed credit approval from their family to yours for life. KelseyChev.com. Reds are playing the Dodgers. They lead uh, one nothing. Good start for Nick Lodolo. Two scoreless innings. Uh, same for uh, Deck Law and uh, Buck Farmer or Derek Law. Who the hell's Deck Law? Derek Law, an inning, didn't give up a run. Buck Farmer, a couple of strikeouts. Lucas Sims, who we're going to talk about here in a second, came on to pitch the uh, fifth and uh, walked a guy, gave up a hit, but struck out to the uh, Dodgers are headed to the plate in the bottom of the sixth inning. Reds lead that Cactus League game, which of course means nothing. One, nil. And then nil like, like it's soccer. Uh, college basketball tonight. Miami takes on Western Michigan. Travis Steele's team in search for its, huh? in search of its fourth consecutive win. The English language has completely eluded me today. You can't wait for tomorrow. Yeah, I'm just excited to have a couple of days off in the middle of the week. I'm not I'm not going to lie to you. <clears throat> this is like my Friday, even though I'm coming back and working on Friday. Makers and Coke Friday. Why isn't it Makers and Coke Tuesday? I totally screwed up Trace Jackson Davis's name on with Tony and Austin. And uh, I've bit my lip again. I couldn't say the word eligibility before. What is going on with me? I have forgotten how to speak. That is a problem when you have the job that I have. Uh, Miami in search of its fourth consecutive win as the Red Hawks battle Western Michigan tonight. Indiana's taking on Iowa. IU a pick in locks of the night. Uh, Dayton battles LaSalle. Horizon League tournament will pit Wright State against Green Bay. NKU plays on Thursday at home against Oakland Hockey tonight. The uh, Jackets skate against uh, Buffalo. They also play hockey against them. How come that we only say that in hockey? They skate against Buffalo. We don't really apply similar verbiage to other sports. You wouldn't say, for instance, tonight, <clears throat> Miami is going to run up and down the basketball floor with Western Michigan. No, they're going to play. They're going to host. They're going to take on. Getting too cute. Uh, we've done this every Wednesday. We're doing it today because I'm not here tomorrow chatting with uh, one of the experts from Ortho Cincy. We have focused over the last few months mainly on NFL injuries. We love Ortho Cincy. You should love Ortho Cincy as well. They've got specialists and locations across the tri-state. They offer walk-in orthopedic urgent care weekdays from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can learn more at orthocincy.com. That's orthocincy. Dot com. With us today is uh, Dr. Benjamin Valley, Dr. Valley from uh, Ortho Cincy. I want to talk with you about Lucas Sims, and we're going to focus on backs. Lucas Sims pitched today. He's trying to come back after what was basically a lost 2022. He missed most of the season. He had back soreness during spring training. Uh, that pushed back his debut for about a month. He appeared in six games and then he was sidelined for the year before having surgery in July. He started throwing in October. I want to ask you about uh, bulging discs, but let's start with this. If he was having soreness in February, why wait till July to have surgery? Yeah, well, and, and I think if you look at his story, it sounds like you know the bulging disc was accompanied by a pinched nerve. He was complaining of numbness in the bottom of his foot that was hurting his throwing motion, and so. When we look at with, with that diagnosis of bulging disc with a pinched nerve, if you look at the data, about two thirds of 75% of people in, in, with that diagnosis get better with initial conservative measures, with that therapy, anti inflammatories, steroid injections. So there's a good chance that he never was going to require surgery. So in, in, in most people that have that diagnosis, it's, it's usually a three to six month process of kind of working through the conservative care algorithm until you really declare yourself as a surgical candidate in the absence of, of uh, neurologic deficits. What is a bulging disc? Yeah, so I think, you know, to understand what a bulging disc is, first you have to understand what a disc is, right? So the disc is a cartilaginous tissue that sits between your two vertebra uh, vertebral bodies that are adjacent to each other, right? And it's sort of the shock absorber of the spine. <clears throat> and so a bulging disc is, is when the disc herniates uh, into the canal or towards the nerve roots, right? Um, and so we call it bulging um, because – 
it, on MRI, sometimes it'll look like it's bulging. Sometimes it'll look, frankly, like it's herniated all the way out. <clears throat> um, but that's essentially what a bulging disc is. When you're a pitcher and you're trying to kind of gut through this sort of stuff, what sort of additional risk or damage do you possibly incur by trying to uh, to go and pitch through the pain? I don't think you necessarily risk additional damage. In the absence of progressive neurologic deficits, uh, you know, weakness, things like that, um, it, it's safe to, to continue to, to – uh, guide yourself through the pain and 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 try to try to work through it. Um, especially looking back earlier, how we were talking, and a, a lot of these people will get better with conservative measures. Walk me through the typical procedure for something like this, and then what the the typical recovery and rehab look like. Yeah, so the procedure for a bulging disc or a herniated disc is called a microdiscectomy. And so what that means is essentially make a small incision in the back right over the level where the disc is bulging. <clears throat> and then we expose the bulged disc or the herniated disc. Uh, so that involves moving the nerve roots out of the way. And then we simply just take out the part of the disc that has bulged or herniated into the canal. Um, once we're done with that, make sure the nerves look well decompressed up and down, and then we close you up. <clears throat> in terms of recovery after that, uh, generally, it's about a in, in professional athletes, it's about a six to eight week recovery. Um, you know, very focused physical therapy, getting them back to play. You know, over over the uh, coming months after that. Uh, obviously, when you're an athlete and you're competing at the highest level, th- there's always there's always the risk of of any sort of back issue, and we'll talk about some of them in 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 some generalities here in just a second. But specific to this type of injury, what is the potential for it cropping up again? Yeah. So uh, recurrent disc herniation or recurrent bulging disc uh, after microdiscectomy, if we look at the data, about 5 to 15%. Um, so it's not zero. Um, it's also not crazy high. Um, you have to keep in mind that, uh, that that's a data set, right? So that's just statistics. There's, you, know, you look at a person like a uh, pitcher that does a lot of torsion, obviously, and he's younger, more active, that probably increases the risk a little bit. Um, but then that's balanced with the fact that this is a world-class athlete who's surrounded by the best physical therapy probably every day. Um, and so while it's not while it's not zero, it's it's still a relatively low rate of reherniation over lifetime. Dr. Ben Valley from uh, Ortho, since he, in, in general, you know, an, an athlete, especially a pitcher, it's repetitive motion again and again and again and again. So what are some of the, give me lower and upper back issues that could be caused by the repetitive motion of, of pitching over the course of a season or even an entire career? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think uh, if you, if you, if we look at, look at the data and again, I love data, but uh, about, 12% of all injuries in both pitching and non-pitching athletes within baseball involve the back or the trunk. Um, and, and the most common uh, cause is, is usually just low back strains. So that's just muscular strain. There's a whole lot of other things that can play in stress fractures, what we call spondylolysis, uh, tears in the disc without a disc herniation called an annular tear. Um, and then transverse process fractures even have been reported uh, within, within baseball athletes. And then upper in the upper thoracic spine, uh, injuries in those in those throwing at, tend to be more throwing athletes, right? And and those tend to involve the periscapular or the muscles that insert on the shoulder blades and run from the spine to the shoulder blades. Can you imagine that the huge amount of motion that's coming out of your shoulder blade as you go through the torsion of a pitching motion? So upper back injuries, um, a little bit more rare than lower back injuries in baseball, but when they do happen, it usually it tends to involve more. Uh, the scapular side of things. We've all dealt with a sore back. Maybe you had a bad night of sleep or you tried to live too much than you should or something like that. You know, I, I always have a sore back when I end up doing like a lot of yard work where I'm bending over repetitively and the pain kind of goes away after after a day or so. What are the signs that a back injury is something a little bit more severe than what I just tried to outline? Yeah. I think the the biggest thing is just pain that doesn't improve with initial conservative measures. You know, the, the classic rice, ice, compression. If, if it's not getting better with anti-inflammatories and initial rest and it's getting worse even, you know, that's a sign that there may be something more serious going on. And then back pain accompanied by radiating pain into the arms or legs, we call that radiculopathy, um, and associated numbness and tingling, you know, that tends to in- indicate it's more than just a little muscle strain. Are there things, whether you're, you know, just a regular dude like me or you're a high-end athlete, are there things that you can do to help take uh, preventative measures to keep yourself from running a, a larger risk of, of having a back issue? 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and in fact, it's probably something all of us should be doing. The, the big three, and I tell my patients this every day, the big three are core strengthening. <clears throat> so core stabilization exercises are key, particularly static core strengthening like uh, planks, things like that. Um, hamstring and posterior chain stretching. So when you think about posterior chain, it's all the muscles in the back. So it runs from your Achilles complex to the hamstring to the gluteal musculars to the muscles to the muscles even up around your spine. And, and keeping those flexible and keeping the endurance in those is, is so important uh, to reducing back pain. And, and so that's why activities like yoga and Pilates are, are, are so helpful when it comes to back pain. Perfect. This has been awesome. Thank you so much. Good. All right, Mo. Thanks. I appreciate it. You got all right, there you go, Dr. Ben Valley, orthosincy.com. We say this all the time. The great thing about the folks at Orthosincy is they have specialists and locations all across the tri-state. It includes walk-in orthopedic urgent care weekdays from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in Edgewood and Eastgate. Uh, it goes without saying this is easier and definitely cheaper than going to an ER whenever you have an urgent orthopedic injury. Go to orthosincy.com. That's ortho, C-I-N-C-Y dot com. We are going to Indianapolis in 20 minutes on ESPN 1530 Cincinnati Sports Station. 